What's up, you betty boys? This is Jeff here, and I'd like to show you a little project that I've been working on for the past few weeks. My international IDI indirect injection 7.3 liter diesel that came originally from the truck that you're seeing over here. It's a 1992 F350 Centurion edition. So it's got wood paneling inside, a cute little overhead console, and this awesome dated 90s paint job. So the motor that came in the truck, like we said before, is a 7.3 liter diesel, and it didn't come with a turbo. It, I thought at first it was fine, but and then when I towed a trailer with a Jeep on the back, I said, never again. There's never, ever, ever a reason to put, to put a trailer on the back of this truck with no turbo. It is the slowest thing out there. You can't even get up a hill. You can't even get out of its own way. So I decided it's time to make some power. So I took the motor out and we decided to do some work. So let's start from top to bottom what I've done. First start with, I guess, the intake manifold. The intake manifold stock, as if you some IDI knows, guys, guys know that it's just a hole, like a carburetor hole. And it's terrible for trying to push positive pressure in because you can't really seal it correctly. So there's a guy out in Washington named Justin from R&D Performance, and he does beautiful job making stuff like this intake manifold you'll also another thing I got from him was the exhaust manifold because nobody makes a turbo kit well one nice enough that I approve of so let's get back to the top so by doing this <clears throat> this is my glow plug controller. The glow plug controller was back here. So now that there's a turbo there, the glow plug controller obviously can't fit. So we had to bring it over here. Another product supplied by Justin. Thank you. And since we're all the way at the top still, we got the injection pump from Justin. It's an R&D 100cc pump. It's nothing huge, but it's plenty to play around with and have fun. So that's all we're here for to have fun. I would like to daily drive this, so this pump's fine for now. Getting to the meat and potatoes. Underneath the valve covers, I have power stroke valve springs because I also got the camshaft from Justin and he recommends that you don't use stock valve springs, especially with the amount of boost that I plan on running. Also, <clears throat> I got this block sleeved. Now, <clears throat> the biggest reason I took this engine out was because you can't do head studs in, in the engine compartment. Lifting a head off is hard enough in the engine compartment, but when you got a bunch of studs and you need to pull it straight out before you can lift it, there's no room. If you see, you have the <coughs> heat box and the climate sooner, and you also have the brake booster. So there's not a lot of fun room. So, on to the awesome part, the turbo. <clears throat> Started life as a simple whole set HX35. Had a absolutely tiny compressor housing on the back. So, upgraded to this big boy, this 18 centimeter, before it was a 12 centimeter. And I also did a HX40 wheel and instead of 12 wheels, I put 10 to make it spool a little quicker since I had such a big exhaust housing. And on the front, we were a little dirty and we went with a wicked wheel. Why not, you know? It's a part, it needs to be balanced, put a wheel on it too. So this is going on the back right here. And then it'll be time to party.
Today we'll be studded and gutted. <laughs> so, instead of using regular bolts, we'll be using head studs. And the only head studs to get are, of course, ARPs, and they're the only ones that they make for this engine. But the only reason I have them is because anything more than probably 10 pounds, people can say you can go higher on IDIs, but you really can't. Um, I want to make 15, 20 pounds and you need head studs. So we got head studs. Motor's in, brackets are installed, turbo installed, 
ready for some boost. Got the starter hooked in, got all the shit underneath done. Was a bitch to hook the trans to the engine. I should have learned from my past experience that should have put the should have pulled the trans with it, but you know, I didn't want to. It was a couple extra bolts, you know, it really sucks. But turned out to be a real sucker. So now that that's all put in, we gotta button everything up. So so these power wires, there's a couple of heater hoses to do, and obviously we have the whole front clip. Now I have an intercooler for it. I already had that mocked up, so it'll bolt right in. And other than that, hopefully we can see it running tomorrow. Now, we just got all our cooling pipes, all the electrical accessories, the front clip, the rad, all the belts, the fan, oil feed line for the turbo, fuel filters on. Basically, everything's buttoned up, and tune in next time, and you'll see this baby run.